consultant at the time of the accident at Three Mile Island and was soon after dismissed from his com company when he refused to work on a Three Mile Island board control panel. Since then, he's become active in a lot of anti-nuclear groups and is traveling around the country organizing as part of the anti-nuclear movement. So Randy, welcome to Alternative Views. Thank you. Could you, to refresh our memories about the Three Mile Island accident, tell us a little bit about it. You were actually living there at the time and experienced firsthand the Three Mile Island accident. What really happened there? Well, on the morning of March 28, 1979, through a combination of technical errors and human errors, the worst commercial nuclear accident in the history of the nuclear power industry developed. That accident brought the core of Unit 2 reactor to within a half an hour of melting down. And what would have happened had it melted down? If it would have melted down, it would have probably have wiped out the entire eastern seaboard from Washington, D.C. to Philadelphia to New York City. My God, you, uh, how is that possible? I mean, what, what would have happened? Well, if the core would have melted down, it would have melted through the bottom of the containment building, which was a four-foot thick concrete structure, and hit the water table beneath the island and exploded in radioactive steam. The radioactive steam would have then dispersed throughout the entire eastern seaboard. How close was there actually a accident? How close were we to an accident? We were within 30 minutes of a meltdown, a full-scale meltdown. There was some melting that took place within the core and it is still in that state today. However, they have been able to control the chain reaction through a borated water solution which minimizes the amount of criticality that takes place within the core itself. But the problem could develop and that thing could still melt down sometime in the future. Now, is the wide area of destruction you mentioned, is that just unique to that place or could it happen at any nuclear power plant? Well, it would depend that? upon the air patterns at the time and which way the wind was blowing and whatnot, but that's fairly normal <coughs> for any nuclear power plant, yes. For instance, there's one in Dallas and the one that may or may not ever be gotten off the ground and um, the South uh, Texas Nuclear Project, right. what would be the destruction, destructive area if they were to melt down? In any given direction, approximately 200 miles. So that means if Dallas went, it could take out Austin? Yes. Randy, what were some of the impact on the environment and human life from Three Mile Island? How much radiation were people exposed to and what were the consequences of this? Well, the exact amount of radiation that we were exposed to will probably never be fully determined and the actual effects that the accident has had on us will probably never be determined either. At the time of the accident, there were seven radiation monitoring devices placed around the plant. Only two of those were operational. The monitoring devices that were on the stacks of the containment building at the time of the accident had a top reading of 1,000 millirems. They were off scale for better than three, three days after the accident began. So, in effect, we really don't know exactly how much radiation we have received. I do know that in the nine months after the accident, the infant mortality rate, miscarriages, and hypothyroid diseases amongst young children went up tenfold. Of human beings in the of area. human beings, yes. I've seen some pictures in the village voice of animals, a lot of miscarriages or strange creatures that were born from animals, yes. deformities of certain sorts. Have you seen any of these, and yes, was this a widespread phenomenon? Um, in the areas that the plume passed over, yes, and I have seen some of those animals, such as Siamese cows being born, and cows with three legs, a cow with an eye in the middle of its forehead, a cat with no bones in the back of its body, and things of that nature. It was very sad. Um, one specifically, specific thing where the plume passed over, it was about an acre-wide area, and it hit some trees, and some of the trees had leaves on one side, and no trees on, or no leaves on the other side. So there's no question that a lot of radioactivity was released from Three Mile Island, and it's had lethal effects. Yes. Well, there have been uh, radioactivity uh, placed into the water of the Susquehanna River, right? Um, during the time of the accident, 2,000 gallons were released into the river. Immediately afterwards, one of the anti-nuclear groups that sprang up, the Susquehanna Valley Alliance, held an intervention on the dumping of water into the river and they were successful in preventing any more water from being dumped into the river from the accident. Have there been any indications of negative results from this, from damage being done either to ecology or to animals or to people because of the dumping into the water? 
uh, done just in just in Lyme. those infant mortality syndrome in the studies that were taken most of those cases developed in Lancaster City and Lancaster mm -hmm. County which is downriver from Three Mile Island and they get their drinking water from the river Randy could you give us some insight into how this affected you personally and made you an anti-nuclear activist at the time of the Three Mile Island accident you were this energy management consultant and your firm was working with the Three Mile Island nuclear installation. Were you anti-nuke at that time or was it only after the Three Mile Island experience that you became the anti-nuclear activist that you now are? At the time of the accident I was not anti-nuclear. I wasn't entirely pro-nuclear, I was somewhat ambivalent. Um, the day after the accident began I went to see the China Syndrome and the China Syndrome had opened in the Harrisburg area on the day of the accident. Oh, uncanny. I left the theater in a state of shock and realized that the general attitude of the people, the utility executives in that movie, was exactly what we were dealing with in the central Pennsylvania area at that time. From that point on, it became a personal crusade of mine to never let that happen again. And that is the general feelings of quite a few people in the central Pennsylvania area. We feel that it is our responsibility, since we have experienced this and been through it, to try and prevent it from happening somewhere else. And that is why I'm in Texas speaking. And that is why I will be traveling around the country talking to other people, as are my brothers and sisters in the Three Mile Island area. Could you say a few things about the claim you made that the Three Mile Island incident was similar to the China Syndrome? First of all, was there the same sort of attitude of the corporation that was producing nuclear energy yes. that was interested in profit before yes. human life. Is that, was that what you were alluding Just to? Just one of callous indifference to the general feelings and insensitiveness to the people of the area. They seem to feel that the people of the area are basically ignorant about nuclear power and that is certainly not the case. For instance, they found radioactive rat droppings in the containment building last year they quickly said that there was no danger to the public safety and that none of the rats had left the island. We ask, how do they know none of the rats have left the island? Do they take roll call every morning? That pretty much explains how GPU deals with the general public. Were you a member of the population that was evacuated after Three Mile Island? How did you experience this? negatively or psychologically when you learned that there might have been a threat to your own life? I was not forcefully evacuated. Only pregnant women and children under the age of six within a five mile radius of the plant were evacuated, but I did evacuate. I woke up about nine o'clock in the morning, turned on the radio and heard that there had been significant releases of radiation to the environment. I was gone about a half hour later. That was a very quick conversion then, wasn't it, to an <laughs> yes, nuclear stance? After we left the movie that evening, we did some reading and, talk and talked about evacuating that evening. We decided to wait until the next day and, and then make a final decision as soon as we awakened the next day. Did, what does that make you feel, the fact that you couldn't have the time bomb ticking in you right now? I'm resigned to it. Are most people up there? I've read studies where the that the people, there's a high degree of anxiety and of the people up there. Oh, that's very this. true. Psychological stress has taken a tremendous t toll on the people of the area. And if any physical effects do in fact show up, the first is going to be the effects of psychological stress, the general anxiety, the distrust of government and utilities, um, nervous problems, gastro gastrointestinal problems, things of that nature. But yet the people are organizing against nuclear energy there and against... We are organized. Right, yeah. against Three Mile Island being open. Can you say a little bit about this? How did you begin your organizational okay. efforts? At the time of the accident, there was one anti-nuclear group in the central Pennsylvania area. That was Three Mile Island Alert. They had about 15 members. A week after the accident, they had 2,000 members. Three months later, there were six anti-nuclear groups in the area with approximately 25,000 members. Three years later, there are now eight anti-nuclear groups in the central Pennsylvania area with about 40,000 members, all total. Immediately after the accident, we set about trying to keep Unit 1 shut down. Unit 1 was down for refueling at the time of the accident. The NRC ordered it, kept shut down until they had determined that it would be safe to operate. 
A number of interventions were undertaken then by all of the anti-nuclear groups, and the Three Mile and Public Interest Resource Center was founded, and the Three Mile and Legal Fund. The Three Mile and Legal Fund's responsibility was to disperse funds to the different anti-nuclear groups to undergo the interventions. Interventions were undertaken on plant design, emergency management, um, management competency, the venting of krypton, and so on and so forth. There has been a two and a half year hearing process then that has taken place and those hearings all drew to a close in late October of last year. And what came out of these hearings? What was revealed? The Atomic Safety and Licensing Board, which heard the hearings, by and large, said that the anti-nuclear interventions were a waste of time and money and that they had needlessly postponed the restart of Unit 1. One case in point, the interventions on emergent or on management competency. One week after the Atomic Safety and Licensing Board issued GPU a clean bill of health on their management competency, two operators were caught cheating on their licensing tests. Mm -hmm. Four of them failed those tests. So they had to reopen the hearings and retest the operators under more stringent procedures. Half of the operators then failed their test later. So the actual results of that operator cheating scandal will not be known for some time until those hearings are concluded. They are expected to conclude sometime around the end of this month. The evacuation planning was another major issue. There are five counties surrounding Three Mile Island and all were required to draw up evacuation plans within a 10 mile radius of the plant. Most of the evacuation plans stipulate that this plan may not work in the event of a nuclear accident because they are expected to draw in volunteer firemen and people just generally volunteers to help with the ev evacuation. They have said, those volunteers, that they will not participate in that, that they will get their friends and family out first and then maybe come back in. The city of Harrisburg, which is the largest city close to Three Mile Island, has only 60,000 people in it. The 10 mile radius would have split the city in half. Instead of including Harrisburg in the evacuation plans, they felt that it would be impossible to evacuate that many people. So they drew the boundaries two miles short, about eight miles, and I live one block on the other side of the evacuation line now. So it's basically the evacuation plans were constituted just for the contingencies of practicality right. of evacuating rather than the concern for the health and welfare and well-being of the people. Absolutely. And you think this is typical of both the political process that's governed nuclear energy as well as the corporate process of producing it. I think it could even go a bit further into civil defense planning. I think our federal government may be preparing for a nuclear war and this is one way of preparing for it without letting the general public know really what they are doing. Could you elaborate on that? I didn't. Well, Around nuclear power plants mm -hmm. now, they are putting up siren systems, civil defense siren systems. They are getting these evacuation plans together, and it just seems like there's more to what is really going on than mm -hmm. what they are telling us about. What about government industry collusion and cover-ups in the case of Three Mile Island? There is a lot of talk about that before and after the situation occurred. Okay. The federal government, of course, under the auspices of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which was split off from the Atomic Energy Commission to regulate nuclear, en nuclear energy instead of promoting it. The Presidential Commission on Three Mile Island found that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission was more often promoting nuclear power than actually regulating it. Part of the problem that we have faced is the lack of cleanup that is taking place. At the time of the accident, General Public Utilities had $300 million in insurance money, and they predicted that cleanup process would take $40 million and six months. Six months later, it was $400 million in five years. Several months ago, it was $1.5 billion in 18 to 20 years. They have no money to clean up Three Mile Island now. The federal government says it will not give them any money to clean it up. So now the ratepayers are being saddled with it. 